Hello and welcome to another video by www.electricalpereview.com. In this chalkboard session, we're going to be covering phasor diagrams. So what exactly are phasor diagrams? Well, you're going to see we've got four empty phasor diagrams laid out here before us that we're about to populate. We've got a delta source right here, and we've got a Y source right here. A phasor diagram, in essence, all it really is is your polar graph of your either currents, voltages, impedance, power. It's just graphed in the polar domain. Usually when we talk about phasor diagrams, however, we're always going to be looking at either the current or the voltage. What we are going to be talking about is balanced phasor diagrams. And balance means equally spaced phasors. All three of our current or voltage phasor magnitudes are going to be equal. And all the phase angles are going to be equally displaced. So for three phase power, we know we've got 360 degrees on our polar graph, and we've got three phases. That means for it to be balanced, each phase has to be exactly 120 degrees apart. So let's start with our Y over here. Here's our point A, and we've got plus VA to neutral minus, these are our phasor voltages, plus VB to neutral minus, and plus VC to neutral minus. So typically when we plot these polar diagrams, I mean all of the vectors are constantly rotating during the time domain. However, we always pick one and set it as phase angle reference zero. That way we can plot the others. And really, a phasor diagram is just looking at a snapshot of where that phasor is at some point in time to look at the relationships between magnitude and phase angle. But in reality, they're constantly moving. So for this example right here, we're going to set, it's usually customary to set V, A, N, our A phasor voltage, to magnitude V at a phase angle of zero. So we plot that on our graph, and we're going to call this guy right here V, A, N, which equals magnitude V at a phase angle of zero. Next thing, we know it's balanced, so our other two phasor voltages must be equal in magnitude and equally displaced by 120 degrees since we've got three phases total. So let's finish our other phasor voltages. We've got VBN, which is our B phasor voltage, and VCN. VBN for a positive ABC sequence means that VBN is going to be displaced our A phasor angle minus 120 and since this is 0 VBN is going to be minus 120 degrees and again for an ABC positive network VCN is going to be our VAN phasor angle plus 120 degrees and since this is zero, then our VCN is simply plus 120 degrees. So what does that look like when we plot it? Well, here's VAN. This is our zero degrees, our x-axis. We're going to rotate minus 120 degrees and draw VBN with the same magnitude. It's going to look something like this. So we're going to say VBN equals same magnitude V at minus 120 degrees. And that's referenced from the x-axis. That's minus 120 degrees. Next we're going to draw VCN. He's at plus 120 degrees. So now we're going to start at the x-axis and go into the positive directions plus 120 degrees and it looks something like this. Same magnitude as the other two phase voltages and we've got VCN equals same magnitude V at plus 120 degrees. And that's this angle right here. Something just to point out, you'll notice that this is actually 30 degrees displaced from the vertical axis, both here and here. Okay, next thing we're going to look at is our line-to-line -line voltage. Now this is where it gets tricky. We're going to have plus VAB across the neutral to B. And we, for positive ABC, we're going to go A to B, B to C, and then C to A. So now we've got VAB, we go to plus VBC, pay attention to the polarity here, minus, and then our last one we're going to have plus 
VCA minus. Your positive is always going to start out at the point here, and your negative is going to be your second point. So VAB plus minus, VBC plus minus, VCA plus minus. Let's draw it down here. Well, we know between our relationships that our line-to-line -line voltages are going to be the square root of 3 times greater than the magnitude of phase voltages. And another thing we know is our line-to-line -line voltage is going to lead our phase voltage by 30 degrees. So since our VA phase voltage angle is 0, the leading 0 by 30 degrees gives us exactly plus 30 degrees. Now just like up here how we could solve for the other two, we can solve for VBC and VCA because we know this is a balanced network. For a positive network, VBC is going to be square root 3 times greater of the magnitude of the phase voltage at an angle of VAB angle minus 120 is negative 90. And VCA is going to be same magnitude as the others, square root 3 times magnitude V at a phase angle of AB phase angle plus 120 gives us 150. So let's go plot our line-to-line -line voltage phasers. Here's VA, VAN at reference 0. We're going to start by drawing VAB. It's going to be 1.73 times greater, right about there. So we'll say VAB equals square root 3 times V at an angle of 30 degrees. And that's this right here. VBC is going to be minus 90, so that puts us right on the y-axis. Again, 1.73 times greater. It's going to put us somewhere right around here. So we're going to say VBC. Whoops. We're going to say VBC equals square root 3 times V at a phase angle of minus 90. And the last one, VCA, is at 150 degrees. So that's going to look something like this, starting from the origin. We've got about 1.73 times greater than its phase voltage, and it leads it by 30 degrees. So we've got VCA equals square root 3V at a phase angle of 150 degrees. 150 degrees from the x-axis in the positive direction, and VCB was minus 90, so that's negative 90 degrees going in the negative direction. Now, remember how we said that the line-to-line -line voltages always lead their respective phase voltages by 30 degrees. VAB leads VAN by 30, VBC leads VBN by 120, VCA leads VCA leads VCN by 30. So let's look at that. Let's pick a different color. So we've got 30 degrees. VAB is plus 30 degrees from VAN. VCB is plus 30 degrees from VBN. And VCA is plus 30 degrees leading VCN. Now, let's go over to our delta. For a delta source, our first three line currents are going to be entering the delta. So we can define this guy right here as IA line current, this guy right here as IB line current, and our last one, IC line current. Next, let's draw our phasor currents. We've got I, A, starting at A, going to B, right here, I, A, B. We've got I, B, starting at B, going to C, circulating right here. And our last one, we've got I, starting at C, going to A, right here, I, C, A. 
let's arbitrarily assign IAB is equal to magnitude I phase angle zero. Now remember, balance three phase, so all three once again are going to be displaced by an equal 120 degrees. For a positive ABC network, this gives us IBC equals displaced minus 120 degrees and ICA displaced plus 120 degrees. Let's graph these before we move on to our line currents. So here we've got IAB with a phase angle of zero, putting us right on the x-axis. IA, B. We're going to graph IBC at minus 120 degrees, puts us something like right here. IBC. Last one, ICA at plus 120 degrees. ICA. Okay, time to determine our relationships with our line currents. For a positive ABC sequence, IA, IB, IC. Our line currents will always be square root 3 times greater in magnitude from our phase currents and they will lag by 30 degrees. So if our phase current for IAB is 0 degrees, IA lags that by 30 degrees, that puts us at negative 30. IAB, our phase current of 120, minus 120, we're going to lag that. Negative 120 minus 30 is negative 150. And IC is going to be 120 minus 30. Gives us 90. So let's plot these on our phasor diagram. Since IA line current is going to line, since IA line current is going to lag its phasor current by 30, it puts us right about here. IA, IB is going to lag IBC by minus 30 degrees. And IC will lag ICA by negative 30 degrees also. IC. Now, what about for a negative sequence? What does a negative sequence mean? So on a positive sequence, all of our vectors are rotating in the counterclockwise direction. That means all of these vectors are rotating in this direction. For a negative sequence, they're actually rotating clockwise. And our vectors will be moving in this direction. So that means instead of having VA lead VB lead VC, VA will lead VC and VC will lead VB, just like in this sequence here. A will lead C, C will lead B. So let's draw our negative sequence phasor diagram. We start with, remember, VAN is still a reference at zero. You'll notice everything this time around is going to be backwards or rotating the opposite direction. So our VAB, instead of being leading by 30, it's now going to lag by 30. So this is our VAB. It's going to lag by negative 30. Next, since we go from A to C, C to B, and B back to A, next we actually have our C phase voltage at minus 120. VCN has a phase angle of minus 120 degrees. All of the magnitudes are still the same, so I'm not going to bother drawing them. Next, again, this time around, our line-to-line -line is going to lag, set a lead. Here's our VCA at minus 150. And next, VBC at 90, and VBN at 120. So let's write it out. All of our magnitudes are left unchanged. VAB, however, has minus 30 degrees. VBC has plus 90 degrees. And VCA has minus 150 degrees. Let's compare that to our positive sequence. 
you'll notice that all they did was change signs. In our positive sequence, we had plus 30, minus 90, plus 150. In our negative sequence, we've got minus 30, plus 90, minus 150. Let's write out our phasor voltages now. Again, VAN is left unchanged because it is still the reference of magnitude V at phase angle of zero. All the magnitudes, of course, are left unchanged. However, this time around, VBN is going to be plus 120, and VCN is going to be minus 120. And if you compare that to our phasor voltages on our positive sequence, you'll notice that VAN is identical. However, this time these two have switched places. And our positive sequence, VBN was minus 120 and VCN was plus 120. And our negative sequence, VBN is plus 120 and VCN is minus 120. Got it? Good. Let's move on to our currents. We're going to start with our phasor currents first. And again, everything is going to be backwards. However, phasor current IAB is left unchanged because it is still a reference at phase angle of zero. IBC is going to be plus 120 this time, and ICA is going to be minus 120 this time. Let's write them down and compare. Again, all the magnitudes are left unchanged. IAB is still the reference as zero, so that's unchanged. IBC has a phase angle of positive 120, and ICA has a phase angle of minus 120. Compared to the positive sequence, again, these two have switched places. Up top, IBC was negative 120, ICA positive 120. On our negative sequence, IBC positive 120, ICA negative 120. Now let's draw our line currents. Since we're going backwards, since line current IA lagged IAB by 30, now IA is going to lead IAB by 30. So let's say that's our line current right there. IAB now has an angle of positive 30. IBC, going to lag this time by 30, is going to be plus 150 degrees. And last but not least, IC is going to be minus 90 or right on the x-axis. IC has a phase angle of minus 90 degrees. Let's write it out. Okay, you'll notice all of the magnitudes are still the same and left unchanged because going to a negative sequence only affects the rotation, not the value of the vector. So now we found IA to be plus 30 degrees, IB to be plus 150 degrees, and IC to be minus 90 degrees. Let's compare that to our positives. Well, up here, IA was minus 30. We've now got plus 30. IA was minus 150. Down here we've got plus 150. IC was plus 90. We now have minus 90. So again, on the negative sequence for our line currents, we have simply changed the polarity of our phase angles. Okay, that's it for phasor diagrams. The important thing here to know is be able to tell the difference between an ABC positive sequence and an ACB negative sequence. The values given in problems won't always be perfect. You won't always have zero for a reference, so be able to tell the difference. Know that your angles are always going to be displaced by 120 degrees if it's a three-phase system, and know that magnitudes will also be equal. For practice, I suggest trying all of this on your own on a separate piece of paper without looking at the screen. It'll be pretty confusing at first, and uh, once you give it a go, you'll be able to work through it and identify any gaps in your understanding and solve them. Okay, that's it for this video. For more examples and to visit our premium review course, come see us at www.electricalpereview.com.